The last type of growth we're going to take a look at is called logistic growth, and it addresses the problem that often comes up as we talk about population growth. If we have a population of deer, for example, in some environment, those deer can't grow forever at the same rate. Eventually, they run out of resources. We say that there is some type of limit, some type of maximum or ideal capacity that the environment can hold, and that's going to impact the population growth. So the question we're going to answer is how do we account for populations that can't grow forever? And the answer to that question is we use what is called logistic growth. And logistic growth hits the idea that most populations have what is called a carrying capacity. or largest population the environment will support. And the formula we're going to look at is a recursive formula. It's going to look at this idea that the population grows kind of annually at some season where births occur in the population, not continuously. So the formula that we're going to use is that the next population number is found by taking the previous population number plus the growth rate times 1 minus the previous population divided by the carrying capacity times the previous population. This looks like a big, ugly formula, but let's break it down. And once we kind of understand the pieces, this is going to become a big plug and chug formula. So as we break this down, this is where R is the growth rate, obviously as a decimal. absent any constraints. In other words, if it was possible for the population to grow forever, R would be the growth rate of that population. And K is the carrying capacity of that environment. So let's take a look if we can use that formula to help us model a forest that has a carrying capacity of 350 deer, which grow at a rate of 8% per year. Of course, that's absent any constraints. If the population is currently 250 deer, what will the next two years look like? Well. Currently, the population in year 0 is 250 deer. For the next year, the population in year 1 
we'll use that formula highlighted at the top. The previous year's population of 250 plus the growth rate sans any constraints, 0 0.08 as a decimal, times 1 minus the previous population of 250 divided by k, the carrying capacity of 350 deer, times the previous number of deer, which was 250. And when we round our answer, after typing that in the calculator to the nearest deer, because we're not going to have half a deer, we can estimate after one year there'll be 256 deer. To find year two, we'll go through that exact same process. The previous year, there were 256 deer. Plus 0.08 times 1 minus the previous year, which is 256, divided by 350, the carrying capacity, times the previous year, which is now 256. And that tells us after the second year, there's going to be 262 deer in the forest. And you kind of notice this pattern is it's going to start to grow and grow as it gets closer and closer to 350 until it finally reaches that 350 carrying capacity. Let's try another example. Let's say a park has a carrying capacity of only 200 rabbits. If there are no constraints, they grow at 150% per year. If the population is currently 225 rabbits, What will the next two years look like? Well, this time you notice the 225 rabbits is more than the carrying capacity, which means there's not enough resources for those 225 rabbits. So as you might expect, we're going to see the number of rabbits decrease towards the carrying capacity. In year 0, we start off with 225 rabbits. For year 1, we take, using that formula up above, the previous year's rabbits of 225, plus the growth rate with no constraints, which is 150% as a decimal 1.5 times 1 minus the previous number of rabbits, which is 225, divided by the carrying capacity of 200, times the current number of rabbits of 225, which tells us after one year, we've reduced to 183 rabbits. Now we have less than the carrying capacity. So in the second year, we'd expect to see an uptick in the number of rabbits. Let's see what happens. The previous year, there were 183 rabbits, plus the growth rate without constraint of 150, times 1 minus the previous year's rabbits of 183, over the carrying capacity of 200, times the previous year of 183, Plugging that in our calculator, we now have 206 rabbits, which again is more than the carrying capacity. So next year, I'd expect to see fewer rabbits. And then this pattern will continue as we calculate more years. And so that's that idea of logistic growth, is it's going to 
approach some carrying capacity, some maximum a number that the environment can sustain based on the resources. It might pass it, but every time it passes, it doesn't pass by as much. It's going to keep getting closer and closer. As we wrap up our discussion on growth, I want to talk briefly about the three types of growth that we've seen in these past few videos. Specifically, their shape and what's going on with the graphs of the different types of growth or decay, meaning it's getting smaller depending on our situation. The first type of growth we saw was linear growth, where we add a common difference. When we had linear growth, we saw that each point would increase by the same amount over time. And so that would result in a perfect line being formed, which is why the equation was very similar to slope-intercept. If it was decreasing, we would subtract a common difference, but you would still get that same relationship, a straight line going down. That would be your linear growth. The second type of growth or decay we talked about was exponential. And that is when we multiplied by a common ratio each time. Often that ratio would be represented as a percent, a percent growth. And with exponential growth, it would start out close to 0. But then as it went off, it would start to grow faster and faster, and it would take off with its growth. Or if it was decay, it would start to shrink quickly as it approached 0, and eventually would level off at 0, decaying away to nothing. This would be like the value of the car that depreciated over time. And then now we've got our third type of growth, which is logistic growth, which will approach a carrying capacity. And so if the carrying capacity is this dotted line, it's going to do at least generally one of three things depending on how it relates to the carrying capacity. But they all represent logistic growth. It might start out below, and it'll quickly approach that carrying capacity and level off at that carrying capacity. It might start off above and drop down to the carrying capacity. Or what also often happens is it spikes past, and then it bounces back, and it kind of bounces back and forth as the bounces get smaller and smaller until it finally levels off at that carrying capacity for the environment until something changes. So these are the three types of growth. It's important that you know for the test which type of growth we're talking about based on the context based on the graph, based on how the numbers are changing. So take a look at those. Take a look at the homework. And let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.